Hello, guys. Welcome back to Back to Basics, um, episode something. <laughs> I lost count a while ago. Uh, so quick summary of what we're doing in this particular series. We're taking the lovely people you see below me who are trade ideas employees, uh, but not traders, and just teaching them about trading. So if this is your first time watching, go back on the Trade Ideas channel. There's a playlist right at the top that will go from what is a stock all the way to where we are now. And we're going to go from where we are now all the way to uh, complex algorithmic trading with artificial intelligence, you know, standing on your head or, or however complex we can get before these people quit on me. Um, so last week, what we started is going over the actual program. So we've done all the basics of trading when it comes to Fundamental analysis, you know, uh, how do exchanges work, how do charts work, candlestick analysis, a uh, little bit of statistical analysis, which we'll get in more into later. And then we started with trade ideas. This is the platform we use to find the stocks that we're interested in. When it comes down the road, we'll show you uh, Brokerage Plus, which is the application we use to send orders for stocks that we're interested in to our broker. But for now, we're just starting very basic with the program. We're going to start with the web version. We're going to play with that for a while. And then when we get to Brokerage Plus, which is only available on the downloaded version, we'll switch over to that uh, then. So last week, we started with the channel bar. So again, just a quick summary. The channel bar is just a list of um, channels that contain scans that our traders have built. So if you want to know what's going on in the pre-market, you would click on the pre-market channel. And there you would see some scans that we have built for you. So you don't really have to know how to do them. And it will just give you what is gapping up, what is gapping down and, and what's moving in the pre-market. Now the homework assignment, which we're going to go quickly down the list was for everyone to play with a channel and figure out what channel they liked and then some idea why, right? You guys haven't traded yet. So I don't expect it to be like, you know, a, a super, you know, uh, well thought out, you know, I've been trading this way for years or anything, but just kind of what you were looking to get and then which of those channels you kind of gravitated to. And then what we're going to do in the rest of today is I'm going to show you how to remove a scan that you liked from the channel, customize it a little bit for yourself, and then add that into a layout that you then save and then you can get back to any time regardless of what computer you're on, whether you're on the web version or the downloaded version or your phone or tablet or, or whatever have you um, to kind of keep an eye and, and do your scanning from there. So let's start with Kelly. What channel did you play around with this week? Um, so I did too. I kept looking at the, um, I believe it was the active trading channel. Okay. And the trending channel. Okay. And what did you like about those? Um, so active trading, I just liked like seeing all of those things, like how <laughs> it kept changing. Um, and then in the active trading channel, I liked how um, it had those two windows on the top. These, oh, the sorry. Yeah, you like the. And I was able to see like the 15 minute and just change that. So this um, one here, you like these two charts? Yeah. Okay. And then, so I think we know who our, our hyper scalper is going to be with Kelly. <laughs> Pick the channel. This is like the busiest. It's the craziest. It's for the, the guy who just wants to sit there all day and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell. Yeah. So okay. That's good. Rudy, where did you get to? Oh. There I am. There you um, go. Yeah, I was kind of keeping my eye on the Surge channel. Surge um, channel. And then I guess the, the action is heating up from the open. I was kind of keeping my eyes on that. I wanted to try to set some kind of filter to give to weed out some of those flat spots in there, but I wasn't for sure how to do that. But. So stuff like this? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. That's what we'll go over today then. Cool. Uh, Marissa, where did you hang out this week? Sorry, I had to find the mute button. <laughs> um, but you know, I'm in between two, you know? I don't okay. know if I'm being loyal to just one. But, um, 
you know, I think what would be ideal for me to like would be the swing channel because with my schedule, I just feel like that might align better with like my, like I said, my schedule. Um, <clears throat> but the windows were kind of empty. So I, I started looking elsewhere. Okay. And I liked the activity that I saw in Barry's window. Barry's um, window. Okay. You kind of get a little bit of everything in Barry's channel. Mm -hmm. um, you get some options. You get free market. Um, the you know the I'm not 100 percent familiar with all the terms, but trend reversal. Yep. I think I think that would be something I would be interested in is kind of watching where the trend and then it reverses. <clears throat> but I'm also a fan of the you know single stock window in itself, just because I feel like you learn a little bit about a certain stock by typing it in there. So. You know, I, there was a bunch of different factors that made me like that channel. But like I said, I think ultimately, though, if I were to start trading, I might have to go back to the swing channel. Um, but I just didn't see any activity. Yeah, like it just seemed kind of slow. So okay. I wasn't sure if that was something that was good or bad. Well, no, and that's something. So that's perfect. We'll go over customizing these layouts this week, but next week and definitely remind me. I'll explain why that channel was was dead, didn't have much in it, and then what you can do to to kind of change that. So we'll go over that as well. That's good. It, interesting the the trend reversal. So Marissa's our contrarian in in investing. It's the that's what I do, and it, it gets a bit of a bad rap. But it's the guy who sees something going up and says, "Okay, when's it going to go down?" And the person who sees something goes down and says, "When it's going to go up." Um, that's interesting. It's different. I like the different styles. And last but not least, Shantae, where did you hang out? I actually was looking at Barry's as well. I wanted okay. to listen to hit, or listen in on his room while I was doing it, but it's been kind of a crazy week. I didn't get a chance to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I like uh, I like the bounces toppers. I like how it had the down and the up. Yep. I don't know. I was just watching him because he's so enthusiastic. So I wanted to see what he, he is. Yeah, what he looks at. Everything, so. Okay, perfect. And for anyone who doesn't know, Barry is our trading room moderator. We have a free room that is actually live streamed on this YouTube channel. And you can go to our website, you can find out how to get in there and start chatting. But if you just want to check it out, he's live uh, pretty much a half hour before the market opens until maybe an hour or so before the close every day. So again, free, don't have to be a subscriber, you can just come on in and check it out. And he commentates. He's a trader himself, so you get to hang out with him while he trades all day. And there's some uh, there's some good minds in there, some good traders as well. So, okay, so that's good. Uh, it's great that first of all, you guys are looking at different things. Um, what's very common in trading, and I, I try to highly discourage, is the kind of follower mentality. Right? People look for uh, gurus. You know, they look for someone. I just want to do what he's doing. And I just want to follow exactly what he's doing or, or someone comes here and says, just tell me what to do. Uh, the problem with that is that if you're doing what someone else is doing, you're always doing it a few seconds late. So, you know, if he's getting into something, he's getting a better price. And if he's getting out of something, he's getting a better price. So uh, here at Trade Ideas, we like to show you certain things. So we'll show you alerts. We'll show you, you know, our AI will tell you roughly when to get in, when to get out, stop losses, this type of thing. But then we like to take that and have you build your own trading plan, your own kind of concept behind that. So that's a bit what we're going to be doing here. So this channel bar is great and it is the best kind of launching off point that I've seen for a product like this in a while where it just gives you everything, right? If you want to pre-market, you can go there. Uh, you know, if you want to know what's happening after hours, it's there for you. But this is like the very tip of the iceberg. So it's just to get people in, get their feet wet, get them kind of comfortable with playing around with the product. And then what we're going to show is today is I'm going to show exactly how to create this and customize it for yourself, right? So we had Rudy talk about the surge channel and a scan he liked from the surge channel and then something he wanted to change. And we also heard from Kelly and she liked certain charts in certain ways. So today what I'm going to show is how to a, pull out something you like and customize it for yourself, and then how to arrange that into 
a layout that you want, right? Because the way I see the progression with trade ideas and the way that I think makes most sense is you go from looking at the channel bar, figuring out what you like, pulling out the things that you like, building your own layout with them and then customizing them. And then as your progression as a trader goes on, you've already learned kind of the basics and then you can start to pick up maybe how to build your own from scratch. But you know, it's always best just to, to take and, and adapt it and adopt it to, to what it is that you want to see. So, so this is the surge channel and the channel in mention was this one down here, Rudy, the action is heating up from the open. Yeah. So what this, yeah primarily is looking for is it's looking for things that from the open here on the left is the daily chart you know we remember from our candlestick analysis the opening tick is going to be right here and then right we have the closing here with the high all the way up here and the low this little tiny wick zoom in a little bit little tiny wick down there so what this is doing is it wants things that are moving up quickly from the open and is doing it on a lot of volume, right? So for example, this one stock here under five minute volume percentage has 3000% normal volume, right? It's a huge volume. The, the over here on the single stock window, you can see relative volume. And what we call relative volume is something that takes what the stock normally does at any point during the day. So if, for example, at noon, usually the stock has done a million shares, and today at noon it's done 2 million shares so far, that would be a 2 relative volume. So this is a 263 relative volume. So it's done 263 times the normal volume today as it normally does, right? So that just tells us something's up, right? You know, as technical traders, statistical traders, we don't really look at the news too much. We talked a lot about this in the fundamental, about how news always happens second. This is kind of how we sense for our news, right? The fact that, you know, this stock is really pumping out volume means that everyone's really, really excited about it. There's something going on. You can then easily go if you want to check out the news and just go to Google and, and, and check it out. But, you know, the, the volume is, is the factor. So what this is, is it's looking for, um, you know, stocks that are moving from the open and it's doing it on crazy, crazy volume. So there's something out there people care about. Uh, so if you like this scan, one thing you can do on the web version, and I'm going to flip a little bit back and forth just quickly to the different versions, but on the web version in the channel bar, everything's kind of locked in a window. So if you want to pull that out and put it in your own window, there's this little, I think they call it a hamburger menu where there's kind of three lines right in a row just up in the top corner of all of these windows. You can right click and you can click pop out. And now you see it made a second window for you. That's a free floating window. You can move kind of wherever you want. So if you go up to the X here on your channel bar and just click it, your channel bar is gone, but this window stays here. So now you've got this kind of blank canvas. You can build your entire layout here. You can do whatever you want. And we're gonna create something quickly and, and simply that kind of mimics what you would have seen in the channel focusing on just this window. And then we're going to change the window to kind of ignore a lot of those, uh, those stocks that didn't do anything. So here you can, you know, you can move them, you can resize them, right? You can, uh, you can make this bigger or smaller, you know, you can do kind of whatever you want from here. And as we talked about in the first one, the way you customize pretty much anything in trade ideas is just by right clicking on it. When you're in any window, if you're like, okay, I want to change something or I want to do something to it, just try right clicking in the middle of the window and you usually get a menu here, right? So just quickly going down the list of this particular window, we have configure, collaborate. Uh, collaborate will just give you a link that if you want to share this window with your friend, you can just send them this and they can, they can look at it as well. Um, you can send this to certain things. So you can send this particular symbol that I've clicked on, which is IIVI. -I, I can say, okay, I want to send it to a chart window and it will open up a chart of that, of that stock. Um, from there, you can also send it to symbol lists, which is something we'll go on down the road, don't worry. Uh, you can change the time frame of it. So if you want to see how this particular window looked five days ago at noon, you can do that. 
Uh, you can make sure it updates only during market hours. If you want it just to have market hour data or live always, we'll include market hour and pre and post market as well. Um, change colors, you can duplicate it. So if you want to make another one, say you want to modify this one, but you want to leave this one the same. And then you can also save this to the cloud. And your cloud is kind of your own little personal thing of it was like a Dropbox or a Google Drive or something like this where we store your layouts for you. And we're gonna do this with the entire layout, just not this window, but this is beautiful because I personally had a hard drive failure on one of my computers a month ago. Um, pain in the ass going through and reinstalling everything and resetting up everything and redoing all this stuff. But with Trade Ideas, at least all I had to do was get the program and then load it from the cloud Everything was right there the way I left it. So save your stuff. Save early, save often, as our old video gamers would say. Um, all right, so we have this window, and this is going to kind of be the centerpiece of this. Now if we want to add other windows to this layout, it's all going to start from the new bar up in the top left-hand corner here. So the things that we're going to add, we're going to add Kelly's chart, and we're going to add the single stock window that I think Marissa was talking about as well just to have a nice, simple kind of layout. So let's start with the single stock window. So, you know, it comes up with the default for you. Uh, it automatically links it. So if I click on this chart, you can see, or this symbol, you can see that it's changing the symbol within the single stock window here. So it does that for you. Here, you might wanna change a few things. You know, uh, it has a certain amount of filters for you, like what was the change in 20 days? Uh, what's the float? things like this. Again, if you want to customize anything, right click and configure. And here are all the columns that you can add to it. There's a bunch. Um, and then here's all of the columns that are in it. So for example, if I didn't care what the company's revenue is, I can click on this and then click remove. And then if I want to find out what the average daily volume over three months is. So that's just going to take you know, what does it do every day for volume using a three month, three month time frame? I can click on this and then I can add it. You'll see that it's down here. And then if I click OK, you'll see that average daily volume three months pop down here. So you can customize this to have whatever you want. Now, we did kind of a video where I pointed out uh, one of the back to basics, some of the things that I like to put in here. But for me, I like short float. I want to know how many people are short. We talked about short squeezes. In the past, I want to know how much volume it's done. Uh, things like, you know, stock twits, relative volume. We have something that scrubs stock twits data feed. For example, 2,000% uh, uh, more people are talking about this stock on Twitter than were prior days. Um, you know, but this is going to be customized to you. But that, that's essentially how you do it. The other tab here is the profile tab, which we talked about. That just has you know, all of the, uh, you know, company outlane, you know, it tells you what the company is, what uh, exchange it's traded on, which again, doesn't really affect you guys at all. So we can move this to wherever we want it and put it down here and then just stretch it out. And then again, just check that it's linked. You can just go click and you can see it will update everything here. So next, let's just add two charts in. So back to new. Everything that you'll see here will launch from new, right? If you want to do a uh, single stock window, you can do it there. Uh, alert windows, top list, multi strategies. That's what we're going to go over next week. The difference between those are AI windows. If you are a premium subscriber, you have access to our artificial intelligence. You can actually open up an AI window here. You can click here and you can see these are all the trades that the AI put through today. Uh, you can modify this as well, which we'll go over when we talk more about the AI, but it's all the same way. You just right click in the body of the window. Everything you can do to that window is going to be listed here. That's the same on this version. And it's the same here on the web version, where if you right click in the bottom of the window or the downloaded version, it's all listed. There are subtle differences, but we're trying very hard to keep the user experience the same because a lot of people flip back and forth. What I'll do is I'll take, you know, my laptop or my iPad and go sit on my couch and that's where I'll do my nightly scanning. So I'll do that from the web version. And then when it's time to actually get down to business, I'll go to the desktop version and that's where I'll, I'll place my trades. I have a quick question. Yep. 
because I am on a Mac mm -hmm. I tend to use this version um, the web version how did you get the blank canvas again so what you're presented with by default you go you have channels and if you need your channel bar back you have this right that's mm -hmm. usually what you're presented with so what we did is we use this little menu here once it loads to pop out just click on it and click pop out you can also do that by right clicking in the window and clicking pop out and then the little x button up here in the corner you just click that and it gets rid of your channel bar but anything that you've popped out will stay i think my uh i don't know what x button again because i had something covering it I had to move. All right. sorry no 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 I, problem this i is, can probably go back and watch it later no, i guess no no no. this is the point of this right my settings Yep, this is, do you see it right here now? Yes. Okay, so the button next to it will shrink it and expand it. Okay. So for example, if you had a little, if you had a little <laughs> tiny panel bar like this and you wanna make it bigger, you can just click that and it will fill kind of the size of how your screen is now, right? And then if you wanted to get rid of it entirely, you just click the X button and that will get rid of it. So with every blank canvas you open, does that blank canvas minimize and then you can create another blank canvas or is it just one? Just one. So you'll have the channel bar and you'll have your own layout. But what I'll show you is how you can load different layouts. So I have, you know, my nightly scan layout. I have uh, a day trading layout. I have a swing trading layout. And I'll show you at the end of this how you can just pop between them, whatever it is that you want to see. Next, we will just add in these charts. So we can go to new and then chart. Um, it will always default to the queues, which is the NASDAQ index. So it has your Apple and your Amazon and your Netflix and all your tech stuff uh, in there. Just like the other windows, we need to right click to customize. So you can right click and you can change your time frame. you know, daily chart all the way down to a one minute chart. You can duplicate this, right? And it will duplicate any of the settings that you've changed as well. Um, you can, under properties, you can show the pre-market and the post-market. So you can either add that or remove that. Remember we talked about pre-market is that, that time between when the market opens, but when some people are allowed to trade and other people aren't, which is a whole nother rant. Um, big one here is symbol link linking. that You can see the button right here in the middle. If this is unchecked, then that means if I click over here, the chart won't change, right? So if I right click and I go down to symbol linking and I tick that, now when I click through here, you'll see that the chart updates. So it's whether or not you want your chart to change or not. So, you know, what I'll do is I have, this is my layout um, here. So I want this chart and this chart to update but I don't want this one down here to update because this is the overall market. So I want to always be looking at the overall market while I trade. I don't want to have to, every time I click a symbol, go back and change that. So I have symbol linking turned on here, but then I don't have it turned on the one down here. So you might want to do the same as well. Um, other than that, you can do dark theme. Some people like the dark theme better where it's got, uh, you know, white highlights around the bars and, and black background. Light theme is, uh, you know, black around the bars and then a white background. Some people, for their eyes, you know, I generally dark mode everything except charts for some reason because I think I've been living with them so long. Uh, scroll wheel is how you'll zoom in and out the easy way. The other way you can do is you can grab these little nubs on either side of the blue shaded area. And you can zoom in and out if you want to do a big zoom out and you can do the other side as well if you just wanted to focus in on like a certain part of the chart right here another thing to note with the chart a lot of people ask is these buys and sells flags so these are where holly may have suggested a trade in the past um thank you there's one stock yeah iq she's in love with so there's a lot of them um where you can see down through here, there was a couple sell signals and then all through here, she was buying. So basically the reason we add that in, even though all of the, everything we report with Holly, and again, there'll be, don't worry, there'll be many videos about the AI, um, is focused on a day trading 
aspect, we recently did a study where we found out that Holly's um, predictions actually for 20 days after, generally speaking, have a drift. So meaning that um, about two to three percent on average, the stock will move in the direction that Holly predicted on that day. So we leave these in just for people who are using it for swing trading, like uh, Sean McLaughlin, for example, has his Holly hot list, which is symbols that he pulls from Holly that he thinks looks good for a longer period of time. And you'll see those flags on this, on that chart as well. Does, um, the, did, so I'm trying to formulate this question, right? That's okay. Um, cause so Holly keeps record of where she bought, right? Mm -hmm. Does it keep track of for like if I were to buy? Uh, not more than one day in. Or is that just not of importance? Like do traders not look want to keep track of that? Uh, they can, and that's something we're going to add in when we build our paper trading module. It's going to okay. show you exactly where in the chart you got in, where you got out. Um, right now, we only do it for one day. So when you reset the platform after every day, it wipes them. But that's something that we're going to add in. Pretty soon. I was just thinking for some reason, I was like, oh, that would be cool to know if I started trading, like what, you know, where I bought and if it tracked back. So. Yeah. And that's something as soon as we get the paper trading module up and we're doing it for that reason. So that when people are learning to trade, they can say they can go through their trades and they can kind of visualize the ones that work and then say, okay, these are the ones that work. So here's a pattern that I've noticed that works. So now let me go look for that. Yeah, that's that pattern. pretty much what I was thinking. Like if like that would, to me, I thought that might be important, but I was, I was unsure if that was actually like something. Nope. That that's, um, wanted, so. that's something really annoying that I'm going to have you guys do a lot of is journaling, yeah. recording what you've done each day, going back and reviewing. Uh, you know, I, one of my videos I have on a channel that was great was uh, to treat trading like a sport. So it almost seems like an opportunity to create a journal. Well, there. that's it. That that's exactly what we want is we want people to go through and to be able to easily see their trades, journal them so that they're making more of the trades that work. But not like an actual journal that you write on like an actual journal on trade ideas. I think yeah. that's on the plan, isn't it? The trader's journal was in. Exactly. I've heard of the, of the trader's whole. journal for a long time. I just never have seen it. Yeah. So what you'll be able to do again, and this is, I'm leaving this in cause this is a good preview for the future is soon you're going to be able to paper trade directly through trade ideas within like a month or two. Um, and you're going to be able to attach notes to that. You're going to say, I bought here for this reason. And then I sold here for this reason. And then you're going to be able to go through your trades. And every time, you know, say, even if you wrote, I sold here and I was, I was nervous. I was up big on it and I was nervous. So I was going to go down. Then you can start to review your trades and say, oh crap, I sell out every time I'm nervous. And then the stock skyrockets, which is something that we all do all the time. You can start to learn from that and you can start to adapt to it, right? Which is the main, the main benefit. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly finish up the layout, which is just gonna take, now that I've symbol linked this chart, and oh, sorry, show crosshairs gives you this. I don't know if you can see it, it might be real faint, but there's a crosshair that shows the date and the price. So if I kind of hold the price here, it says it's 1927 and this blue bar on the, on the side. And that happened on June 28th, 2019. This is a, just a quick way if you said, oh, well, I'm interested in this stock that breaks this, you know, breaks down here. You can just hold your mouse there and you can say, okay, well, that's 1606. So that's entirely up to you whether you want that. So now we're going to duplicate it because it's going to duplicate that symbol link. And Kelly was saying that she liked both the daily chart and a 15 minute chart. So if we move this guy up here and then we go and we change the time frame to a 15 minute chart, because we did the symbol linking before we duplicated it, now when I click any of these symbols, it's going to update the chart as well, both charts. So we have a 15 minute up here and we have a daily chart down here, right? So last but not least for today, two more quick things. One is modifying this. So now we've built a layout, but as, or as Rudy was saying, there's a lot of you know, stocks that don't really do much in it, right? Generally speaking, as we've talked about before, that's volume. You know, This has done 81,000 shares today. Rule of thumb, half a million shares, give or take, 
on average. Um, you know, earlier in the day, you could get along with 100,000 or 200,000. But, you know, anything under half a million shares a day is going to be pretty hard to trade. So, sorry, I skipped over that. Right click, configure. And we'll get deep into this later. So we're just going to configure what's already out there now. You can do a lot of stuff here, but we're just going to focus in on just configuring this. If you go to the filters, this is going to show you all of the filters that comprise this scan, right? So it's looking for price. Everything in trade ideas is min max. That's how everything is kind of talked about. So minimum price is a dollar, maximum price is a thousand dollars. So it's going to filter out between that, right? So you're cutting off the ends all the time. For volume today, it has minimum 50,000 shares. So if we want to up that to see stocks that move around a little bit more, we might say, okay, minimum volume, 200,000 shares. Okay, and here's all the other ones, but we're just going to leave these for now. So what's going to happen is we're going to click OK, and then it's going to take us to the summary tab, which just gives you a nice English explanation of what's happening so you're not you know, caught up in the code. Click OK again. And there you go, right? So what it's done now is everything I click on here, you'll see down here has done more than 200,000 shares today, right? So last but not least, and we'll do a little Q&A. And like you said, <clears throat> shouldn't trade under a half a million though, right? Typically? Per day, right? Per so day. You got you to gotta think about what time of day it is, right? So if you're saying half a million per day, then in the first 15 minutes, if it's done 100,000, then you know it's probably going to get to a half a million that day, right? Now you can filter by literally anything. So you could say, I don't want to do anything that doesn't have half a million today. But because we're looking at this at the close, we're going to know that at least 200,000 is gone. So if you're watching this in the first half hour of the day, and it's only showing you stocks that have done 200,000 shares or more, you can be pretty confident, if not extremely confident, that by the end of the day, they'll be doing, um, you know, a million, half million to a million shares a day, right? So anything that you click on here will have down here more than 200,000 shares a day. So now that you have built this, you don't want to have to do this every day. That'd be annoying. So you can go up to tools up at the top here and save to cloud, right? And it's going to bring up this window. Now you can save, if you just click on any of these little bo tick boxes, you can save any of these windows. Or if you want to do, you can click the entire layout button and it will save the whole layout. So now if I go, just put Rudy in there. Now you can save or you can save and share. So say I want to give you this layout. I can click save and share and it will come up with this little link here excuse me, if I wanted to give anyone this layout and say, here, look at my layout that I built. You can copy this, send it off. Someone else clicks on it and it will just bring up a website that gives them instructions on how to load the layout. So now it's saved and it's in my cloud. So how we were talking about earlier, Marissa, with um, going through and using different layouts, let's get rid of that. I'll show you that later, just tools, windows, and close all. But if I go back to tools, you can see there's a load from cloud button. So for example, I can load this one. And this is a nightly scan that I built that's searching at what all Holly did that day. So I can go through and I can take a look at all Holly's trades, right? So this is something that I look through every night, you know, and it loaded everything up just like I like it. Now I can close all these again. And now I can go back to Rudy's layout, which will just be here, just called Rudy, right? Here's everything in my layout or in my cloud. And I can load this. And the beauty of this is then if I want it to go under the same account on a desktop version or over to another computer, I log onto the website, I log, you know, I put in my credentials, I hit load from cloud, and it will load it just the way it is. So any questions? I think that was a good. I have uh, two questions. Really okay, quick. awesome. Um, so the buy and sell flags, does that automatically um, add itself if you have premium or is that something that we need to filter in? Nope, that actually has itself even if you don't have premium. So 
because it's past holly alerts, we, we let them in. Um, so those are just there, right? You don't need to do anything at all. They should just pop up every time. Now, if there is nothing, then it most likely just means that Holly has not been too interested in that stock, right? It's, you know, she doesn't trade everything. She only trades things that she thinks that have edge. Got it. And then, um, the second thing is, um, once we create our layout, we're able to set it as a default layout, right? Or is that? That's more for the downloaded version. Uh, oh, okay. The web version, you can click to save your favorite layout. That's something that we're, uh, or save for the default layout. That's something that we're working on. Doesn't work as it should just right now. Um, but so what you're going to do is you're going to be presented every day when you log on with uh, the channel bar again. Right. So it gives you this, right? So all you have to do is close this down and then go load from cloud and you'll get your layout there. So it's a couple steps, but, um, the beauty of that and the advantage that the web version has that I really like over the downloaded version is you can switch between channels while your background layout is open. You can't do that in the downloaded version. That's something I'm going to ask them to do the other way that I liked. Um, any more questions? Anyone else? No. Nope. Okay. So, you know, again, glad to be back. Uh, we're going to continue to kind of march through the program. Uh, next week we'll go over the different scans by the end of the next few weeks to a month, you'll be building your own scans for whatever you want. Statistical analysis, get you guys building a trading plan and journaling, reviewing, you know, that the module should be out by then for paper trading. And then you guys will be off to the race races. So everyone wave while I turn off the recording. Bye.